Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to what is hopefully going to be a quickie tutorial for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And this is about the most important thing in the game. No, not actually flying a plane, obviously. Taking screenshots, in particular, how to use the drone camera to really line up for your perfect screenshots. Let's talk about the quick difference between the external camera and the showcase or drone camera. The external camera is unbelievably convenient, because while you're in external mode, which by the way, normally you can get to from the cockpit by hitting the N key on your keyboard, or of course you could just pull up the camera tools over here. In external mode, just like when you're in the cockpit, you can click and hold the right mouse button to orbit around your plane. You can also tap the middle mouse button one time to go into this sort of free look mode. And it's a great way to line up for screenshots and visuals. The camera stays pointed at your plane and you can just go around very, very easily. Now, there are a couple of downsides to this. One of the big things in terms of screenshot taking are the instruments on the screen, which are very useful if you want to fly your plane from outside the cockpit, but not as interesting for screenshots. Now, unfortunately, and I don't know why this is, there is no hotkey to toggle the heads up display on and off, as far as I can tell in the current release version today. Hopefully, that's something that does get patched in at some point, because it shouldn't be a very difficult thing, or maybe someone will make a little add-on, a little mod for us. You can turn off the instrumentation if you go into, if you hit escape, you go into your general options, you go to camera, and then slightly confusingly, rather than being called external camera, it's referred to as a chase camera over here, but you can toggle off the heads up display. And if you turn that off, you will no longer get the instruments over here. Now, that's kind of awkward to do that every time you want to take a screenshot. So if you never fly your plane from outside uh, by using the external view here, maybe you want to turn off the heads up display, and therefore you'll never have to worry about the screen, the, them being in the way for the screenshot. You may have noticed my trick that I've done in the past, which is, if you cycle in and out of your cockpit view into external, you can see it takes about a second for the instruments to come up. So you can just pop in and out, take a screenshot really quick before the, uh, the instruments show up again. However, that is pretty awkward. So let's finally suck it up and deal and take a look at the showcase slash drone camera. So the showcase camera mode does not have a heads up display. Um, it does have some fixed camera positions, the same as with external, so you can have some interesting preset views. Like, these are really dramatic, awesome preset views that could also make for green, great screenshots. But what we're really looking for here is the free camera slash camera drone mode. And what we have here is a camera that we can move around. Now, what's a little bit weird about the drone mode, and one of the reasons I hesitated jumping in, is it's a lot more work to set up. You can't just click and drag and move your camera around like you do with the external view. The other thing to note is that when you are on your showcase mode over here, by default, your flight controls are disabled. What does that mean? Well, and I'll show you how to do this in a second. Let's take a look at the rudder over here. Looking at the rudder, if I hit my, my rudder pedals, you can see no movement. I'm gonna hit a magic key, now you can see it move. Right now, flight controls are enabled, but normally they are not. So I'm, again, I'm moving the rudder pedals and nothing is happening. By default, you don't fly your plane while you have the drone mode. And the reason is you're instead controlling the drone. Now, you don't use your normal flight controls for this. You don't use your yoke. You don't use your pedals. You don't do anything like that. Instead, you use your keyboard. While you are in drone mode, your first set of tools is going to be the WASD keys. Now, of course, all of these can be configured. If we go into controls and we go for this purpose, we'd go to keyboard and then we'd go to camera. And here we've got drone camera. Again, a little inconsistent as to whether something is called a drone or a showcase, although drone is a sub mode of showcase, so that might be part of it. And there's tons and tons and tons and tons of keys to control various things over here that you can take a look at but I'm gonna just talk about what the default keybinds are. So W, A, S, D, W, S. So move forward, move backwards. A and D is your left and right. So between those four keys, you can position the camera pretty much wherever you want. Next keys to throw in is R and F. R and F, R goes up, F goes down. Now you've got six keys to completely and truly position your camera anywhere you want. Dude, that's a dramatic shot. I'm gonna take a screenshot. Oop. Okay. Let me bring uh, let me bring this back up over here, um, just so that you can confirm that we're in showcase mode. So WSD, R, and F. The next keys you're gonna to want to throw in, and you're gonna need both hands for this on your keyboard, possibly, is the number pad. Assuming you have a number pad on your keyboard. If you don't, you may have to go and rebind some of these keys to something else. But on your number pad, eight and two will pitch your camera 
up and down. So we're rotating up and down now. So for example, if I use R to raise my camera, then I can go ahead and pitch my camera down and get a nice screen over there. Four and six will yaw your camera left and right. So you've got all your rotation tools over here. It's also worth noting the five key on here will reset our camera's position. There's also the space bar. If you end up with roll, which can happen in some of the modes that you're in, if your camera ends up being rolled to one angle or another, the space bar will reset your camera roll, which actually we can confirm here. So space bar doesn't change my, um, doesn't change my, my position. It also doesn't change my yaw, but if I was pitched up or down and I hit space bar, it does reset that. Okay, a couple of switches over here that are gonna be very useful. With drone follow mode on, which is probably what you're gonna want on 99% of the time, what happens is when your plane starts moving, your drone will move along with it. Your drone is basically locked in a relative position. So if we are, say, here, directly after the plane, when the plane starts rolling forward or ends up moving left or right, the drone is going to stay in the same position relative to the plane. It's going to be right behind its tail the whole time. Usually this is what you're going to want. If you turn drone follow mode off, what's going to happen in the, if the plane starts moving it will see, like, for example, if I release the parking brake and increase my throttle right now, we would watch the plane as it disappeared down the runway, but the drone itself wouldn't move. Whereas if we put this on, the drone would follow. Drone lock mode is brings us behavior that is a little bit similar to the external mode. With lock mode on, what's going to happen now is the drone will always look at its target, and by default, the target will be your plane. With lock mode on, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use WASD here to move my drone around, but notice that it always follows the plane. No matter where I go, the plane is centered up. Sometimes it's what you're going to want, but sometimes it's not going to, going to be what you want because you're going to want to offset. So if right now, if the drone lock mode was on, it would still be staring at the plane instead of, you know, off in the distance. So you can do these kind of cool offset shots like this. In fact, one second, I like this shot so much, I'm going to take another screenshot. Now, one of the things, and I don't have an answer to this, is this little indicator over here to show you the toolbar is available. It fades away after about a second of no inputs. It would be really nice maybe if you could manually hide this a little bit faster so that you, don't, you didn't have to wait as long to take a screenshot. Because even moving your mouse around anywhere keeps it over there, and I don't want that in my screenshots. If anyone's got any advice for that, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so with our drone mode, we've got the follow, the lock, the focus allows you to do sort of depth of field. You can see there's, so there's auto mode. And if we do this, we can mess with the, the focus a little bit and it'll do this sort of, um, oh, a little bit of a bokeh effect. We move down a little. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to be an expert at setting this. This actually might be really convenient. There we go. That's not bad because the plane is nicely in focus over here and the background is kind of blurred, very dramatic very cool looking you can configure keys as well i think there are keys configured by default to move this with just the keyboard as well which may give you a little bit more fine control there's the auto mode i personally i like everything to be in sharp focus so i'm going to go ahead and keep this disabled for now the zoom speed drone speed and rotation speed affects how the drone responds to keyboard input so four percent drone speed now is about this fast what if i go to 100 percent? whoa that is much faster okay most likely if you're lining up your camera on your plane and you're in follow mode like this, you're probably not actually gonna want the drone to move very quickly. So that's probably okay. But if you're not in follow mode and if you're just trying to, you know, rip across the train, maybe you're trying to set the drone far away so that you can see the camera from far, which will help with the uh, lock mode as well, then maybe, okay, you know what? We'll go ahead and we'll bring this up so I can set myself really far away over here and maybe get some action shots or something like that. Rotation speed is the same sort of idea. If I turn off the focus mode, so right now, I rotate that quickly. If I bring this down, well, I don't rotate at all, which is no good. Do this. Oh, that's slow and selfish. Oh, that's so slow. 50% actually seems like a pretty good, feels good to me. So there you go. So this is how you can use the drone mode to try to line up for your perfect screenshots, whether that's in the ground or in the air. Now, again, because in showcase mode by default, your flight controls are not activated, you're generally going to want to do this either on the ground or with active pause or with autopilot enabled. Probably um, one of those is the most likely option. Now, if you do want to be able to fly your plane while in showcase mode like this, the magic key I talked about earlier by default is C, C for flight controls. So if you hit C, now you are no longer controlling the drone. In fact, WASD doesn't move the drone anymore. It's Those keys are probably still going to do whatever they're hot keyed to do in your normal flight. But with C on, 
more importantly, your yoke, your controls, these things are responding. Oops, I didn't realize I didn't actually have my, uh, my yoke uh, screwed on tight to my desk here, so it's moving around. But you've got flight controls, and then you tap C. Now the flight controls no longer respond to me, but I once again have control over here. So these are all configurable keybinds. Hopefully, this will help you take more and more gorgeous screenshots. Oh, um, screenshot keys. As far as I can tell, there's no built-in screenshot key here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, which is maybe a little bit unfortunate. So you're forced to use your operating system kind of screenshot keys. If you are running Flight Simulator through Steam with the Steam overlay, you can probably hit F12 to take a screenshot. Otherwise, if you're on Windows, um, one of the most convenient ways for this is probably the Windows key plus print screen. Now this will take a screenshot of your entire desktop. It will save it in your personal folder. Um, so whatever your username is, pictures, screenshots. So, you know, same place you would find my documents and, and those sorts of folders, right? Your, your home folder. So in there, you've got a pictures folder. It'll have a screenshot subfolder. And that's where if you hold Windows key and hit print screen, it goes there. If you're on a Mac, you've got actually quite a few options with the combination of sort of, uh, what is it like Apple option three and four, they do slightly different things. I use it all the time on my laptop, but trying to say it out loud is a little tricky. You can, if you don't know how, just Google, you know, Mac screenshot key, and it'll either save it to your, depending on what keys you hit, it'll save it to your clipboard or it'll save it to your desktop. Um, if you are on Windows and you are running the Microsoft's game bar, you can also, rather than hitting the Windows button and print screen, if you hold Windows Alt print screen, it will only take a screenshot of whatever window you have active. Um, for most users, it's not going to make a difference, but if you're on a multi-monitor setup like I am, it's quite nice because by default, if I just hit Windows print screen, I get a giant picture from both monitors, and my second monitor isn't flight simulator stuff, it's, you know, my, my flight charts and whatever, so I have to crop it in Photoshop. Um, if anyone else has got a better, better advice for taking screenshots easily and cleanly uh, for either Windows or Mac or whatever, that would be fantastic. Please let me know in the comments. Um, oh, the other thing I want to mention, if you're on Windows, what you can do is you can hold um, Windows Shift S will go and give you an extra little mode here, which I can showcase. It'll gray out your screen, and then you can click and drag a rectangle. It'll put it on your clipboard. You'll also get this little pop-up here where you can actually see the image that you took a screenshot of. If you want, you can mark it up, although really what you're probably going to do at that point is save it to your computer somewhere. So uh, Windows Shift S lets you take these great little crop screenshots which can be useful for certain things as well. Folks, that's it. Ooh, that was a little longer than I'd hoped, although we did cover a lot of really interesting screenshot options. So hopefully you find it useful, and if you do have some great screenshots of your flight simulator experience, hey, tweet them at me. I'm at Quill18. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.